What's going on people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Hughie and you're watching Paper Talk. We are back again, bright and well, it's grey and cloudy on a Tuesday morning to go through the latest breaking news for NS and see exactly what's making the headlines in the back pages of the most fraudulent publications available to man. We buy them so that you don't have to. Love to your mothers, I hope you're all doing well and looking after each other in these turbulent times. We're all we've got people. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. I want to say a quick shout out to the newest members of the Fraud Gang Members Club. You are massively appreciated. And here is your fastest finger on the button yesterday and your commenting fraudster of the day. We have got five fraudulent publications to be going through today, including the Daily Express, the Guardian, the Daily Star, the Daily Mail, and the Daily Mirror. It's daily like Thompson. It's daily like Paper Talk. Let's get down to it. This is for the ones who Yeah, and I'm delighted to announce that today's video is sponsored by none other than One Football, the perfect app to keep you up to date with all the stats from all the leagues around the world, transfer rumours, updates, notifications and articles about the clubs that you follow. It's super useful for stuff like Fantasy Premier League or if you're just a massive football obsessive like me. The link to download the app is in the description box below, so do give it a go and let me know what you think. Right then, let's start by whizzing through the back pages and we begin on the back of the Daily Express with Denmark against England in the Euro Nations League set to kick off tonight at 7.45. The headlines are dominated by two England starlets who've been given the opportunity to represent their country and have unfortunately let themselves down. The headline says, you idiots, Foden and Greenwood sneaked girls into hotel. They've been sent home in shame by furious Southgate. They've been fined by Icelandic police for breaching the quarantine rules. And their clubs are planning harsh disciplinary measures. This is, of course, after Philip Foden and Mason Greenwood were sent home by Gareth Southgate for trying to sneak, well, not trying to, they did actually sneak girls into the hotel. Those girls exposed them by sharing the images, the videos on Snapchat, and as a result, they have not only gone viral, but it has come back to haunt these two talented individuals. And on the back of the Daily Mail, it's the same story. Stupid boys, Greenwood and Foden, sent home in disgrace after the pair break COVID rules by sneaking girls into England Hotel, with Manchester United and City both left fuming, and the FA will review security. They both made their international debuts in the 1-0 win over Iceland in Reykjavik on Saturday night and have been axed from the squad for breaking the COVID-19 rules after allowing two women into the Radisson Hotel saga where the team was staying on Sunday. Much the same story on the back of the Guardian here except with a slightly different tone. Uh, Gareth Southgate, the England manager, saying, I've got to support them. Southgate backs Greenwood and Foden after virus breach. He has admitted that they've been guilty of naive behaviour, but he said that he wants to shield them from criticism because of their age. The back of the stars say, dumb and dumber. Greenwood and Foden are facing three lines bans. Manchester City ace Phil grovels and says he's sorry. Now they can expect the clubs to take action as well. And on the back of the mirror, kicked out in disgrace, furious backlash for three Lions pair as they're axed and fined £1,360 by the Icelandic police whilst being slammed by their clubs and potentially facing the three Lions snub. So obviously they won't be playing in tonight's game against Denmark, 7.45 kickoff, Euro Nations League Part 2. Clearly a very unfortunate set of circumstances for Phil Foden. And they are both young and we should take that into consideration. What is very unfortunate is that Phil Foden does have a wife and child at home who will be devastated that they have been brought into the public eye in such a manner. Foden has actually issued a groveling apology saying, I made a poor decision and my behaviour didn't meet the standards that were expected of me. I'll learn a valuable lesson from this error in judgement and I wish Gareth and the team good luck in the game against Denmark. As you can see, it hasn't gone down well. Pampered academy life leads to likes of Foden and Greenwood mistakenly thinking they're bulletproof. And in the Daily Mail, we have the timeline of shame regarding Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood's Icelandic adventures, shall we call them. Here are the two girls in question. Icelandic girls Nadia Siflindel Gunnarsdottir and Laura Clausen. 
both of whom have honey trapped these frauds into the most embarrassing of situations which has led to them being dropped from the England squad. It says on Saturday at 5pm Foden started the match, Greenwood came off as the pair made their uh, England debuts against Iceland. In the afternoon they had a rest in the evening, the pair invited local girls to the England Hotel away from the communal areas, but in breach of the COVID-19 bubble and the FA's regulations for international duty. Greenwood's social media interactions with the girls are then discovered by an England staff member. And yesterday morning, Icelandic website DV published videos of the two players taken by the girls at the England Hotel. So they've obviously sold that video to the paper. And these guys have only got themselves to blame. And unfortunately for Gareth Southgate, this is yet another headache as far as the England side go. Let's not forget that James Madison was spotted in a Leicester casino during England's defeat against the Czech Republic last October after withdrawing from the squad due to illness. Or there was Jack Grillish, who was charged with driving offences after crashing his car during lockdown, having been at a friend's house when everything but essential travel was banned. Let's not forget that that was just 24 hours after he done a video telling everyone to stay at home. Of course, Carl Walker broke the lockdown regulations twice, hosting a party with two girls and meeting up with family. Then we've got Harry Maguire, who was obviously arrested on the Greek island of Mykonos and convicted of aggravated assault, resisting arrest and attempted bribery after a brawl with the police. And now we have got Phil Foden and Mason Greenwood caught inviting girls into the team hotel in breach of the COVID bubble and the FA's regulations for international duty and they have been sent home in disgrace. Down in the back of the Daily Mirror you can see confirmation of Everton's signing of the Colombian attacking midfielder James Rodriguez who puts pen to paper in a deal worth around 20 to 22 million pounds. The 29 year old is reunited with Carlo Ancelotti and has signed a two year contract with the option of a further one year extension. He said he's absolutely over the the moon to be reunited with Blues boss Carlo Ancelotti who of course signed him for £71 million from Monaco and also to Bayern Munich on loan from Real Madrid and he said I'm a winner, I'm a real winner and I can see the plans here, the project is very serious. He said everyone means business and I think the seriousness and determination to win trophies can lead to silverware. This is one of the most high profile signings in Everton's history and with nearly a hundred million followers they hope that he can accelerate the club's global growth. Alan, Hamas Rodriguez and hopefully Abdullah Dekure within a few days to be confirmed. Three absolutely huge signings. Let me know uh, in the comment section below whether you think that that can help Everton and whether or not they will be pushing for European football this season. Moving on, Newcastle United have signed England striker Callum Wilson from Bournemouth for £20 million and they've also picked up Ryan Fraser on a free transfer. Wilson joins on a four-year deal from Bournemouth for about £20 million whilst free agent Fraser signs a five-year contract after leaving Bournemouth at the end of June. It says here that Aston Villa actually bid slightly more than Newcastle offering £21 million for the striker's services. However, he was so drawn in by the fact that Alan Shearer called him after he received his first call-up for England uh, that he started asking Shira questions about what it was like in Newcastle, uh, what it felt like playing for a team like that, and he has been convinced. It's a big move for Newcastle, who expects to bring in Jamal Lewis towards the end of the week as well, and that would complete a trio of signings who are likely to start for the club and are taking them forward. There's no denying that. Fraser and Wilson can combine to great effect. We've seen that for Bournemouth for quite some time now, and you can expect Newcastle to bring in in Norwich defender Jamal Lewis who they have had a £13.5 million bid accepted for. We've got confirmation here that Manchester City's two stars Emmerich Laporte and Riyad Mahrez have both tested positive for the Rona. Manager Pep Guardiola is also self-isolating after visiting his family in Spain. PSG forward Kylian Mbappe has also tested positive for the virus and will miss France's Nations League match against Croatia on Tuesday. Sheffield United last night announced the signing of three players including Chelsea Ethan Ampadu on a season long loan. He joins fullbacks Jaden Bogle and Max Lowe at Bramall Lane after their arrival from Derby 
after agreeing a £15 million double deal. Ampadu was on loan at RB Leipzig last season but found first team opportunities hard to come by and apparently boss Chris Wilder has offered him more game time. Ampadu has been a full international for Wales for nearly three years now and he played in both of Wales Nation League's wins this month. He has however only made 12 appearances for Chelsea so hopefully he does get more game time here. There is some talk about John Lundstrom who's refusing to sign a new deal but Wilder has said to the fans please back him he sees his immediate future here and he will probably sign on the dotted line he will however be out of contract in July so the club have got a decision to make there last night I watched the Euro Nations League Norway 5 Northern Ireland nil and I tuned in for one player in particular and by god he didn't disappoint truly a sensational talent Erling Haaland with two goals and an assist uh, and sensational goals as well. He is completely unplayable with incredible pace, an amazing left foot, uh, unselfishness and just an eye for goal like no other. What a player. Sensational scenes of glorious emotion. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen the game, go and watch the highlights at least. Do yourselves a favour. Right then, let's go through the rest of the rumours. Doing the rounds, Manchester City are preparing a new bid to sign Kalidou Koulibaly but Napoli won't accept anything less than 75 million euros. Aston Villa are set to make a 16 million pound bid for Bournemouth striker Joshua King as they step up their search for more firepower. They are still being linked to Brentford's Ollie Watkins, so keep an eye on that one. And Porto's Alex Tejas, the 27-year-old left-back, is in advanced talks with Manchester United if reports are to be believed. Aston Villa have made a second bid for Arsenal's goalkeeper Emilio Martinez and are seriously testing the club's willingness to keep him. This bid reportedly much closer to the £20 million valuation that Arsenal have put on the Argentine goalkeeper. Will we see the move being made? Arsenal do need that money to secure their top targets but would prefer to sell other players given that he's been at the club so long and how impressive he's been uh, after Leno was injured. Cardiff City have signed Liverpool's 23 year old winger Shea Ojo on loan for the season. Chelsea are hopeful of reaching a compromise with Rennes over 28 year old goalkeeper Edouard Mendy after offering around £20 million and Kennedy is joining Granada on loan but Michi Batshuayi has rejected the loan offer from West Bromwich Albion. Right then, that's about it for this time. I'm going to love you and leave you. I hope you're all doing well and looking after each other. Uh, I will be on Twitch later on streaming some NBA 2K21 and possibly some Marvel Avengers. Depends how we get on. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. And if you're watching the show and enjoying it with some snacks or an early morning coffee, then send me a picture and I will share it on my story. For now, though, I'm going to love you and leave you. My name's been Hugh Wizzy and this has been... A lot of fun. Peace.